So Mendel, um, what is it that makes the psychedelic experience so exceptionally interesting from the perspective of people who are concerned with music? So for people who are concerned with music, right? so music researchers or artists or therapists work with music, how, why would psychedelics be so interesting for those people? That's an interesting question. It's kind of a reverse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would say there's a number of things that come to mind. Um, first of all, from a research perspective, in a psychedelic state, people perceive music radically differently as such that the mental imagery experience to music is more vivid. The emotions are more intensified. Um, all the sensory experiences are more intensified. There's a kind of general intensification of the subjective experience of music. That would make psychedelics, from a research perspective, a really interesting tool to understand the mechanisms of music better. Let's say the neuroscientific mechanisms. Um, I think for artists, I mean, there's so many examples in history of musicians and artists that received inspiration from having direct experiences of psychedelics. Not only psychedelics, but I would say mind altering substances more broadly speaking, right? All the way from hash to uh, psychedelics, to opium, to cocaine, <laughs> you name it. It's in the nature of the artist to expand and perturb the boundaries of the usual sense of self and then transcend oneself and experience the world with fresh ears or fresh eyes and then invite others into that experience. I think that's what I would say to that reverse question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, was the, that was the reverse question. I, I could also ask, yeah, conversely, maybe the, that's more kind of the, <laughs> the expected question. So what is it about music that makes it such a valuable tool for psychedelic assisted therapy? Mm -hmm. The way psychedelic therapy is being developed right now involves a very strong introspective music listening component. Uh, more precisely, patients are usually encouraged to listen to music with their eyes closed, with an eye mask, with headphones. Uh, and music is almost the only stimulus present, at least for a large uh, period of the session. Um, so this is really where my, uh, my own research began, is asking the questions, starting to ask the questions, what are the functions of music in psychedelic therapy? What is it that music does? during the sessions um, that influence these therapeutic experiences. What are the um, motivations of therapists to include music in psychedelic therapy sessions? What were the original motivations in the 50s and 60s? Can we empirically validate them? Can we challenge them? Can we refine them? Can we better understand, basically, long story short, what music is doing in psychedelic therapy? Um, and that is what we've been starting to do over the last years. And what we are discovering is the, the really, I would say, profound significance of music in the whole therapeutic procedure and the therapeutic experience and the outcomes of the therapeutic experience. And out of the wide range of experiences that patients can have when under the influence of a psychedelic, there are certain experiences that are most significant for the therapeutic work. That these are experiences concerned with um, personal significance, meaning-making, um, autobiographical reliving, coming to terms with unprocessed memories of the past, um, transcendent peak experiences. What all of these experiences have in common is that they have profound personal significance. And it's music that seems to be a really important driver into facilitating those experiences. And this has been one of the motivations to include music in psychedelic therapy, to increase the likelihood of these kinds of experiences to occur. Um, but music can do many other things. Music can also facilitate reassurance, calm, safety, a sense of grounding, a sense of stability in the absence of stability, uh, enhancing focus, deepening certain subjective experiences that need to be unveiled and, and, and for the therapeutic work to be uh, allowed to be co coming to the surface a bit more fu uh, fully. Um, there's a lot of different things that music seem to do therapeutically. Um, but there, the the question of music and psychedelics is way larger than this. And this is always what I emphasize when I give um, presentations, talks, podcasts, is that when you look at the history of psychedelics and music, they are really tightly intertwined. 
music is amongst one of the most ancient um, innovations we had. One of the first instruments we've been building, one of the first tools we've been building alongside hunting tools were musical instruments. And this is hinting that music has played a very important role in our culture for literally tens of thousands of years. Uh, and probably much longer than that, because we don't need instruments to make music. We can sing, right? And there's all these theories about how music or musicality is part of our language and how there may even be this proto-language that is more musical before we developed uh, verbal language, linguistic language. Um, so the question of music of psychedelics is um, ancient. Psychedelics have been used for thousands of years and music have, has been created for thousands of years and often in that combination as well. Like if you look at traditional use of psychedelic plants and cacti and mushrooms uh, for medicinal and spiritual purposes, music plays a central or according to some anthropologists, an integral component in these psychedelic plant ceremonies. Mm. Uh, and shamans would, would, would say something very similar as the modern, uh, the music is there to evoke a particular kind of subjective experience or spirit in the phenomenology of the shaman. So without going in, into too much detail here, because this is a, a topic that, that fascinates me a lot, mm. Yes, the, 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 the history of psychedelic music is incredibly rich and fascinating. Yeah, right. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, this, this is a, a large topic. Uh, I think <laughs> we could talk about this for much longer. Yeah. And I will um, let the switch in yes. there. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, I hope you will. <laughs> um, yeah. But now coming back to um, current developments uh, or, or the current state of music, in mm -hmm. uh, psychedelic assisted therapy. So what are some current limitations in the current model and what are some promising future developments perhaps in this field? Well, the very first thing I would say to that question is um, the main problem is a huge knowledge gap. Uh, but you look at, um, especially the new generation of therapists that are learning how to work with psychedelics, the question always arises, well, how, how do we work with music? How do I know what a patient needs in a moment and how do I match that need with the right music out of a huge options of music, right? If you look at available on Spotify and iTunes and you name it, right? There's a lot of different directions you can go with, with um, selecting music for your patients. So what music do you select for patients to begin with? And maybe even more importantly, how can we do it in a person-centered way? And how can we make sure that the music that is selected is really tailored to the individual? that comes into the session with a unique personal narrative and story and journey that requires personalized support for that reason. Uh, so that's the first thing I would say. There's a huge knowledge gap uh, that we are addressing, right? But there's lots of work to do ahead of us. The other challenge may be that not all therapists are musically inclined, or at least they tell themselves that they're not musically inclined. <laughs> a reconnection that needs to be facilitated for therapists with their own um, musical intuitions in, in order to become better psychedelic therapists. By the way, uh, we just, uh, just as a side note, we, uh, we completed uh, the, the music playlist or this music system, we have to say, like we, we, could, we implemented like a block system in our study where people cannot choose, in, like therapists cannot choose individual pieces, but they can choose one of five blocks for four different phases. Mm -hmm. So there are 20 blocks, and so you have 625 or so combinations possible. And mm -hmm. I think it's good, and we, we've had our, our already, I think, four or five dosing sessions with patients, and uh, it's, it's also therapists are not too overwhelmed with being a DJ, because they only have to make four decisions. Oh, exactly, exactly. You, the last thing you want is, is therapists to fiddle around. What are you excited about regarding the upcoming Insight 2021 conference? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a really amazing gathering of, um, of um, both colleagues, friends in the field that have been doing amazing research for many, many years. That's really, um, you guys did an excellent job in bringing together the pioneers in the field, so to speak, uh, but also lots of new faces, which the more I go to psychedelic conferences, the more I actually avoid... <laughs> Forgive me, um, Matthew, if you see this, and people like Matthew Johnson and others, because I, I see them speak all the time. You know, I'm, I'm really interested more and more in the people that I, that I don't know, that, that bring into, um, into light new topics or new research or, or you name it. 
yeah so i'm really looking forward to um to especially attend those those lectures yeah but yeah well done it looks like a really really good lineup yeah thank you mendel and uh yeah looking forward to seeing you at the conference